Good morning, Year Six. Now today's maths activity is a is an arithmetic practice. So you have got twenty questions to have a go at, and you can answer them on the sheet or you can answer them in your home learning books. Lots of them will need you to have some written methods um, for your working out as well. Now this video is to go through the answers and to talk you through how you might have found the answers to some of these questions. So if you haven't yet completed the arithmetic, can you pause the video and then take a little bit of time to do that in your books. Now that you've done the arithmetic questions themselves, we are going to look through how to answer some of these questions. So we're going to start with question number one, which is 197 subtract 100. Now this is something that you may have been able to do in your head. This is something that you may want to use the column method for. I'm going to use a little bit of both. So I know that 1000 subtract 100 is going to leave me with 900. I know that I've then got 97 left because that number that we started off with was 1097. So I need to add 97 onto the top of my number which is going to leave me with 997 as my answer. Question number two was 146 multiplied by two. So I'm going to set it out using the column method and because we're only multiplying by ones, then we only need to have one space for our answer here. Six multiplied by two is 12. So we're going to carry the 12 underneath. Two times four is eight but we must remember the 110 underneath here. Eight plus one is nine. Two times one is three. So our answer to number two is 392. Question number three is 7.6 plus, sorry, seven point, I've written that wrong. 7.1 plus 1.6. So for this question, you may have done it in your head. I'm gonna use the collar method and I'm going to make sure that I line up these decimal points. One plus six is seven. Seven plus one is eight, but I need to remember that decimal point still. So our answer is 8.7. Question number four, 42 times two. You may have used the column method for this. You may use your working out in your head and go right, 40 times two is 80. Two times two is four. Add them together. So your answer to number four is 84. Question number five is an addition problem, so we're going to use the column method for this one. We have got 616 and we are adding, where are we, number five, 742. So we're going to start off with our ones column as we usually would. Six ones plus two ones equals eight ones. We're then going to move on to our tens columns. One ten plus four tens equals five tens. And then finally, in our one hundreds column, in our hundreds column, six hundreds plus seven hundreds is thirteen hundreds. And because there's nothing else to add here, we would just put that one there straight away. So the answer to number five is one thousand three hundred and fifty eight. Number six. The question is six times four. That is just a very simple times table question that we should hopefully know the answer to already. Six times four equals 24. Number seven, the question is 302 subtract eight. Now you've probably been able to do it in your head. I'm going to use the collar method just in case to make sure I'm absolutely accurate. Two subtract eight, I cannot do because two is less than eight. I cannot regroup from the tens column because there are no tens. So I'm going to regroup from the one from the hundreds column, which leaves me with two hundreds left. And I'm going to take that hundred and put it in the tens column ahead of this zero. So now I've not got zero tens, I've got ten tens. But I need something to add to this twelve. So I'm going to regroup from those ten tens, which leaves me with nine tens. And I'm going to put that one ten that I've taken in front of the ones. So I've now got 12 ones take away eight ones. 12 take away eight equals four. Nine take away nothing is nine. Two take away nothing is two. So our answer to number seven is 294. Question eight, again, just for accuracy, I'm going to use the collar method here for question eight. We've got 1.6 plus 
plus 4.26. So we're going to start off with the hundredths. We always start on the right hand side. We've got, I can add in a placeholder there. I can see there's no hundredths plus six hundredths is six hundredths. We then go to the tenths column. Six tenths plus two tenths is eight tenths. Mustn't forget the decimal point. And then our ones, one one plus four ones equals five ones. So the answer to number eight is 5.86. Question number nine, our question is three times six times four. So I'm going to choose two of these numbers to multiply together. First of all, I'm going to choose the biggest two numbers. I'm going to go for six times four. You may have chosen two other numbers and that's absolutely fine. As long as you get the correct answer at the end, that's what we hope for. So six times four is 24. I've now got to multiply the three to that. 24 multiplied by 3, 4 times 3, 4, 8, 12. 2 times 3, 2, 4, 6. We've got our 1 to add on there as well that we've regrouped. 72 is our answer to number 9. Okay. Number 10. The question is 3, 6 plus... One sixth, and luckily for us, we're adding these fractions together, and they've already got denominators that are the same. Both of those denominators are six, so all we need to do is add the numerators. Three plus one is four, the denominator stays the same as four sixths. Now, some of you may have taken this a step further and simplified your answer because both of these numbers are even, they have both got a factor of two, they can both be divided by two. 4 divided by 2 is 2, because there are two 2s in 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3. The simplest our answer can get is 2 thirds. However, if you wrote your answer as 4 6, that is also correct, and you can give yourself a tick for that. Question 11 is 420 divided by 6. You may have done this in a few different ways. You may have thought, right, we're dividing and we've got quite a big number there. We've got a three digit number, so I'm going to use the bus stop method. So you may have done 420 inside your bus stop. You are dividing by six. So six is outside of the bus stop. Six is into four, cannot do. Regroup the four, put it ahead of the two. Six is into 42, we've got six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. Seven sixes in 42. Sixes into zero. Zero. The answer is 70. You may have looked at the question 420 divided by six and realised that if you got rid of this zero, that question says 42 divided by six. Now we know that 42 divided by six is seven. And then We've got to add that zero back on to show that actually it wasn't 42, it was 42 tenths. So now it's seven tenths. Okay, question number 12. We've got 12.8 times 10. Now this is a question that we have been looking at this week in our maths learning. So when we multiply by 10, we go left larger. And there is one zero in 10. So all the digits are going to move just one column to the left. So the one 10 turns into 100. The two ones turns into two tens. The eight tenths turns into eight ones. There's nothing after the decimal point. So our answer is simply going to be 128. Okay, question 13 we are on now. Question 13 is three squared. Now, hopefully you have remembered that this symbol here, squared, means multiplying by itself. So three squared is another way of saying three times three. And we should know that three times three equals nine. Okay, we're gonna move on over to question 14, 14. Question 14 is 40,000 subtract 6. 
100. Now again, you may have done this in a few different ways. You may have thought, right, I want to be really accurate. So I'm going to put it in the bus stop method. 40,000 subtract 600. We've got zero take away zero is zero. Zero take away zero is zero. Zero take away six, we can't do. We know we're going to have to regroup from the digit four. We're gonna take one from the four. We're gonna take one 10,000 and put it in front of the thousands which leaves us with three in the 10,000s column. We're going to take one from the thousands column, which leaves us with nine thousands, and we're going to put that thousand in front of the hundreds. So now we've got 10 hundred, take away 600. 10 take away six is four. The rest we would just keep as the same because we've got nothing to subtract. Nine take away nothing is nine. Three take away nothing is three. You may have used your knowledge of number bonds and realised that 600 plus 400 would get you to 1,000 so that you know it's going to be 39,000 and then you're left with that 400 from that 600 that you took. Question 15 says 80 times something is 1,600. So you want to work out how many times you can fit eight, um, sorry, 80 into 1,600. Now, if we do our little sneaky trick again, if we took off a zero, we would just be left with eight. If we took off our, three, our two zeros here, we would just be left with 16. Now, eight times something is 16. Eight, 16. Eight times two is 16. However, we are working with some quite big numbers, so we need to add those zeros back on to show that it wasn't eight ones that we were multiplying, it was eight tens that we were multiplying. We were multiplying that by 2,000, as we've got with our three zeros there, to find 16,000. So that is our answer to number 15. The missing number was 2,000. Question 16 is... 4,200 divided by 60. So you may have used something from a previous question to help you with this one. Again, we've got lots of zeros on there. And I know that 42 is a multiple of six. So if I got rid of those zeros again, 42 divided by six. I can count in my six times tables. Six. 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. 42 divided by six is seven, but it wasn't 42, it was 4,200. So I'm gonna add the two zeros from here. And we were dividing it by 60, not six. So I can add the zero back on the end there as well. Question 17 was 30% of 1,200. Now to find 30%, the first thing that I would do is look for 10%. And you would find 10% by dividing this number by 10. And we know that when we divide by 10, we go right to reduce. All the digits move to the right. So it's not 1,000 anymore, it's 100. It's not 200 anymore, it's two tens. And then we would have our placeholder at the end. 10% is 120, however, we want 30%. Now, to get from 10 to 30, we multiply 10 by 3. So that's what I'm going to do with my answer here. 120 times 3. 100 times 3 is 300. 2 times 3, or 2 tens times 3, 20 times 3, is 60. And there is no ones. So our answer is going to be 360. Okay, question 18 was 1.23 times five. I'm going to rewrite this question out in the column method, but I'm gonna remove the decimal point. And now it looks like 123. I'm removing the decimal point, but I need to take a note that there are two decimal places after the decimal point. So I'm just going to put here two DP, two decimal places. And then I'm going to write in the column method 123 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 5 is 10, plus the 1 is 11. 
1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So my answer to this part of the question is 615. However, I need to remember to count back those two decimal places. So from the furthest column on the right, I'm going to go 1, 2. My answer is 6.15. Question 19 says 1 half equals 0 point something. And this is just a number fact that we should remember. Hopefully we remember. And um, one half as a decimal is half of one. And half of one we know is 0 0.5. And we can always link that back to our knowledge of number bonds. Half of 10 is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1. And half is a half of 1. And finally, we are at question 20 which is a column method addition question. And it asks us 29,347 plus 64,210. So hopefully we've got all of those digits lined up in the correct columns. We're going to start from the ones column. 7 plus 0 is 7. 4 plus 1 is 5. 3 plus 2 is also 5. 9 plus 4, we've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm going to regroup that one down there. 2 plus 6 is 8, plus the extra one is 9. So our answer is 93,557. Hopefully you've managed to mark along as you were watching the video. And next time, when you, it's a Friday, it's very likely that you're going to have an arithmetic lesson again. And hopefully we would see that your score slightly improves. So even if you didn't get the score that you were hoping for on uh, today's arithmetic, that is not to worry because next time I'm sure that you will definitely get a slightly higher score than you did today. Okay. Have a lovely weekend and I look forward to seeing you all soon.